The Chinese Communist Party has been threatening Chinese defectors on American soil, specifically individuals who've been exposing the origins of the SARS-CoV-2 virus, COVID-19. One of these individuals is Dr. Li Meng Yan. She was a virologist in Hong Kong who defected to the United States, and she has other information as well, including about Chinese military biological warfare programs. And it's great having her on today to talk about this. Hey, Dr. Li Meng Yan, uh, thanks for being on Crossroads. Thank you, Joshua. Thank you for having me. So let's jump into a bit of what's happening right now. Of course, you were one of the big whistleblowers to come out from China. You're a Chinese virologist. You escaped China. You came to the West, you started talking about the origin of the virus. You said, now I've seen some articles saying that you've been threatened by the Chinese Communist Party after doing so. Can you tell us what's been happening? Oh, I have got this kind of threatened since the first day uh, my supervisor, the WHO expert, Dr. Diao Peng at the University of Hong Kong to ask me to conduct the confidential investigation about the novel virus come out in Wuhan. That was 31st December 2019. And he kept telling me that be silenced and don't cross the red line. If not, I will get disappeared. And also the life threat happened uh, since the Chinese Communist Party realized that I will escape from Hong Kong. And also, of course, after I got uh, America, I always receive such threats and uh, threats, and also uh, they expose my uh, passport, uh, they expose my address, and they clearly cl uh, claim the online that they will make me disappear in America. Let's just talk briefly about your story. You escaped from China. You were a virologist in China. You were working with other Chinese scientists on viruses, uh, very much like the one we're seeing now. Can you tell us about some of the research you're doing in China and what made you want to defect? So uh, I worked at the University of Hong Kong School of Public Health uh, before I came to America for five years. And I worked in the WHO H5 reference lab. That lab is also the national laboratory for the emerging infectious disease for Chinese government. And my work involved because I was a medical doctor and also I'm the PhD. So my work actually involved the uh, study of influenza virus and the universal influenza vaccine development, and also later on the SARS-CoV-2. Now, what was it that you saw within these reports and information you were seeing? I mean, you were investigating COVID-19, the virus now spreading and mutating all around the world. You were investigating this. What was it that set off the alarm bells for you? Oh, the first-hand intelligence I collected since I started this confidential investigation from 31st December 2019, actually, I got it from uh, including the China CDC headquarters office and also the local government, local uh, hospitals and laboratories involved military and uh, civilian scientists. So all these things show that Chinese government first, they have known the genome sequence of this virus in December 2019. And also they know this is human to human transmission. They know this is a very dangerous emerging infectious disease. However, they let it happen in Wuhan. And also the, later on when I examined the sequence, I realized that the reason Chinese government doesn't want the outside to know the outbreak in Wuhan is because this is actually the virus come out from the military labs and after gain of function modification work as the novel bioweapon to target human. And Chinese government doesn't want people to know this because later on you see that they managed to let this uh, spread all over the world become the pandemic. And to achieve this goal, they also make up a lot of evidence. For example, they deny that the virus is dangerous and they just tell you there is no human to human transmission. They tell you this is like the flu, you don't need to isolate people. And also they uh, keep telling this kind of uh, come from nature. And uh, all the scientists uh, under the control of the Chinese Communist Party work together to make up such evidence to chase people. So this is very huge, the scientific uh, misinformation crime too. A lot of reports saying the genome was never looked at, but actually there were Chinese scientists who did, who did get the genome 
uh, isolated it and even reported on it, and they got disappeared. The CCP disappeared these scientists and then disappeared any talk about the genome. Uh, I'm curious, did you hear anything personally about when that cover-up started in China, when they tried to erase the genome? Yes. So because the genome can tell you a lot of things, and especially if you are the Chinese people working in the uh, scientific field or medical field, you understand Chinese Communist Party, and then you will realize why this change happened. And then uh, Chinese government from the beginning of the outbreak has warned the doctors and the scientists to listen to the instructions from the central government. For example, based on my intelligence, the people I reached to, even they work directly with George Fugao, I mean the Chinese CDC director, they dare not to tell me anything they will tell me, oh, all the things are confidential because government doesn't allow you to talk, and if not, you will be punished. You have to listen to them. And yes, for example, example like Dr. Li Wenliang, the passed away with approval from Wuhan, just because he uh, tell the people around him to remind, uh, to be careful of the new coronavirus and show that uh, genome evidence the virus looks like SARS-1 and it is infectious, then he got punished. And also there are another seven doctors get punished at him at the same time. But do you know where are the seven doctors now? I do not. We don't know too, because no news you can get. This is so-called disappeared and also silenced. And you know where Dr. Li Wenliang is. He passed away now. And I can tell you that based on the information from people who know him, because we are in a very small doctor group, and Dr. Li Wenliang get punished. So when he get infected of SARS-CoV-2, the government doesn't want him to get treated uh, uh, in time. So that means the government won't give this kind of punishment and uh, kill his life. I mean. This, there is a chance he can recover if he's lucky enough, but clearly he's not that lucky. And the government actually won't see this happen. Have, have you seen cooperation on these programs with WHO or NIH? Uh, actually, first we talk about WHO, and WHO worked very closely with Chinese government to help Chinese government cover up and spread misinformation. And I can say that because my boss Malik Paris is a bridge, as I mentioned to you, and I work with a bunch of WHO experts in emerging infectious diseases, including my two bosses and also my husband and other professors. And I know that if I can tell you, even until now, the um, technical officer in the WHO for COVID-19, um, Maria Van Kukov, actually has very close connection with Malik Paris, and she get a lot of help to get promoted to this position by Malik Paris. And also, I want to tell you is W. Uh, uh, WHO was identified, uh, was recognized as a surveillance organization for organization of bioweapon convention in 2005. And guess what? After that, from 2006 to 2017, doc, uh, Hong Kong doctor Margaret Chen was put into the uh, position of general of secretary for over 10 years. And she has been to my lab to tell us in uh, face to face that she appreciates the help from Chinese Communist Party and also my boss Malik Paris to get into this position. And later on is Dr. Tedros. And NIH gave a lot of funding, of course, because they also have good connection with Chinese government. And China used this way to get your taxpayers' money and your technology and infiltrate the academic field in America. And also NIH director like Dr. Fauci, they get the benefits they want from China.